السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا حبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما My dear brothers and sisters, I have recited from Surah 33, verse number 35, where Allah says, Verily for all believing man and all believing woman, all, all surrendering man and all surrendering woman, and all believing man and all believing woman, and all truly devout man and all truly devout woman, and all man and woman who are true to their words, and all man and woman who are patient in adversity, and all man and woman who humble themselves before Allah, and all man and woman who give in charity, and all self-denying man and all self-denying woman, and all man and woman who are mindful of their chastity, and all man and woman who remember Allah unceasingly. For all of them, Allah has prepared forgiveness of their sins and a mighty reward. My brothers and sisters, I read, I, read this, I read this verse for a reason. In the recent days, we have seen a notorious picture of how media influencers could become the role model for not just ordinary boys and girls, especially teenage boys, but also Muslim boys. Somebody by the name of Andrew Tate came to prominence over the last few days. Apparently he has become Muslim. Whether he has become Muslim or non-Muslim, it's not my business. What is my business here is to tell you that Andrew Tate is not our role model for how women should be treated in life. 
Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is our role model. Andrew Tate came to fame because of his notorious, provocative, outrageous, misogynistic statements that he often makes about women. He has somehow become the voice of teenage boys, many of whom don't find an outlet to express perhaps their deep, dark and dirty desires. Andrew Tate has made some of those voices more fashionable and more acceptable. Andrew Tate is not the example of Islam. If he has become Muslim, if he has become Muslim, let him learn Islam before he becomes a spokesperson for Islam ever, if ever. But from what he has said so far about women, it is nothing but despicable statements, nothing but despicable way to look at women. Misogyny is wrong in any form, shape, size or way that manifests in our society. And Andrew Tate has made a living out of deriding, denigrating, insulting, mocking, objectifying, sexualizing women generally. So I want to make it very clear. Young people, if you're listening to what I'm saying, Andrew Tate is not your role model. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. And Quran is the word of Allah that defines how we treat women. If Allah treats women as equal servants of Allah, just like men, who are you to say women are not equal? Who are you? Allah is saying they're equal. And you want to say Allah is wrong? Allah says in the Quran, for verily all man and woman who have surrendered themselves. In the Muslimina wal Muslimat. Wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minat. All believing man and all believing woman. Wal Qanitina wal Qanitat. All truly devout man and all truly devout woman. Was Sadiqina wal Sadiqat. All Man and woman who are truly, who are true to their words. Wasabirina wasabirat. All patient man and all patient woman. Allah defines categories of forgiveness and success for man and woman equally all the way in this one long verse. He does not say only men. He talks about men and women. In another verse, we read, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ بَعْدُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بعد. The believers, man and woman, are close and protectors of one another. يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُقِيمُنَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةِ وَيُتِعُونَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ أُولَئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Believing man and woman, are protectors of one another, enjoining that which is good and forbidding that which is wrong. And standing constantly in prayer, giving their zakat, paying heed unto Allah and His Messenger. And it is they upon whom Allah will bestow His grace. They, not just men. It is they, men and women, that Allah will give His grace and His blessing. And in the previous verse we find it is they, man and woman, who Allah has readied forgiveness and mercy. We find in another verse, Hunna libasul lakum, wantum libasul lahunna. They're like your garment and you're like that garment. Allah is describing the relationship between husband and wife. Like a garment and a partnership. Not leader and subject. Not king and subject. Not the ruler and subordinate, no. Partnership between a man and a woman. So my brothers and sisters, Allah describes man and woman as equal. Allah describes man and woman as partners on this life. Allah describes man and woman as protectors of one another. Allah describes man and woman as his servants. And Allah says both his servants will receive mercy, forgiveness and his grace and his blessings who are you to deny women their equal right and status in Islam? Who are you? 
I can go on and on. Islam does not discriminate women. Islam does not discriminate women. How do we know this? Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had Khadija as his wife and he had from Khadija four daughters. So he knew how to deal with women. He knew how to deal with a wife and he knew how to deal with four daughters. Subsequent to the death of Khadija, he married more women. And he knew how to deal with each and every one of them. Can you give me one example of one of his wife ever complaining about Rasulullah ever in their life? Any example of anybody narrating one story where Rasulullah was unkind to his wife, rude to his wife, he was ill-mannered to his wife, he did not treat his wife fairly and equally. He denied his wives uh, their fair right. Give me one example of not one wife he had. He had nine wives. Give me an example of a single wife who has ever complained against his character or behavior. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Give me one example. I've only been married to my wife for 22 years. If you ask her, she probably has got a book of complaints about me. I'm a man. I'm a human being, right? One wife. And she's got so many complaints about me. Now, if I'm not a role model for you. Don't follow me at all. I follow Rasulullah Here is a man who is a prophet. He had more than one wife, nine of them. Not a single one ever complained about his character ever once. In fact, they said something different. When they asked Aisha radiallahu anha, Oh Aisha, tell us about Rasulullah's character. She said to the companions, Do you not read the Quran? What do you mean we don't read the Quran? Of course we read the Quran. Then she said, if you read the Qur'an, you would not be asking me this question because he was the living manifestation of the Qur'an. The companion who asked, he said, I felt like the earth had moved under my feet. I shouldn't have asked that question in the first place. How embarrassing I should even ask that. He was like the Qur'an. So, if Rasulullah is the example of how to treat women, why do we, us men, decide we should treat women differently? Why? Because of cultural misogyny, because of our own selfish desires and whims, because of ignorance, because we think we got it right and Rasulullah got it wrong. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. Allah forgive us from that thinking and that behavior. So brothers and sisters, Allah has given man and woman the same constitution in the way he made them. He has given a man a brain, a woman a brain. It's not that women have half a brain. Astaghfirullah. Whoever says that, they need their head checked. In fact, those who say that, they probably don't even have any brain. Man and woman have the same brain. Man and woman have the same human body. Man and woman have the same human emotions. Man and woman have the same human aspirations, desires, wants of life. Why should you have the right to discriminate women? Just because you're a man. Brothers and sisters, women are not <coughs> objects of desire and sexualized beings sent by Allah on this earth for the pleasure and titillation of men. That's not why Allah has created them. He says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا ليعبدون. I've created human beings and jinns only to worship me. And worshipping Allah doesn't include sexualizing sisters, sexualizing women, objectifying them. If you look at a woman with sexual gaze, Quran orders immediately lower your eyes. For the first one is halal, the second one is from shaitan. If you look again, it's from shaitan. You're doing with desire. This is how much we respect our woman. This is how much we're supposed to regard our woman. They're like our mothers. The way you treat your mother, you should treat any other woman on the face of this earth. The way you treat your wife should be no different to the way you treat with respect and honor any woman on the face of this earth. Andrew Tate talked about how women are only for subjugation, only for desire, only for obje objectification. They should be silent and they should obey man because they have been made to serve men. Such a nonsensical idea, such nasty thinking doesn't have any space in any human civilized thought process and it definitely does not have any space in Islam. My brothers and sisters, in the past, women were denied their basic human rights. Life, property, intellect, 
family, faith, dignity. Women were denied all of that. They were buried alive in Mecca, around Arabia, because men were embarrassed, ashamed, if they had a daughter born in their family. Rasulullah worked very hard to abolish such a, an awful crime from his society. And Allah says in the Quran, on the day of judgment, the girl buried alive will rise and will say, Why was I slain by you? For what reason did you kill me? Was it because I was a woman? We don't kill our girls anymore. I know physically we don't do that. But we kill them by objectifying them. We kill them by creating slavery for them. We kill them by denying their rights. We kill them by subjugating them. We kill them by taking their rights away, their freedom away. We kill them by denying their dignity and honor. In the modern world, you would have thought there would be no prostitution, no places where women have to sell their bodies to, learn, to earn a living. It just exists till today. The worst form of crime you can ever imagine. And we allow that to happen. It is same and tantamount to killing a woman. And Allah says in the Quran, on the day of judgment, all of these women will rise and say to you and I, Bi ayyi dhambin qutilat, why did you kill me? Why? What will you say? Ya Allah, I was a man, I could, so I did it. You and I would be thrown in the fire with our face first. For treating and mistreating servants of Allah. Women every, have every right to come to the masjid. Some people say, yeah, a woman should not come to the masjid. Who told you that? Whoever says that hasn't understood Islam. Definition of a masjid, remember, definition of a masjid is they cannot exclude any Muslims from coming to it. That's the definition of a masjid. If a masjid excludes anybody, it's not a masjid anymore. I went to a masjid in central London where it says there is no space for sisters. I had my wife and my daughter with me. It was Asr prayer time. I wanted to pray with my, my family. They said they, they can't pray. I made sure my, ch my, my, my wife and my children pray. There was a massive palaver over it. Ashamed of such places of worship. They deny our sisters place to pray. Oh, their prayer is better at home. Who told you that? Their prayer is better at home if they can't come to the masjid. If they can't come to the masjid for duties and responsibilities. But you have no right to deny them entry to the masjid. Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu did not like his wife from coming to the masjid. He didn't like it. So companions asked Umar al-Khattab's wife, why do you go to the masjid when he doesn't like it? Do you know what, he, what she said? She said, why don't you tell Umar to stop me? Ask Umar to stop me. Tell him to tell me not to go to the masjid. So the companions came to Umar al-Khattab and said, yeah Umar, why don't you tell your wife not to come to the masjid? You don't like it. He said, how can I tell my wife not to come to the masjid when I heard Rasulullah say, never stop a female servant of Allah from coming to the masjid. How can I? So the companion said, why don't you like your wife from coming to the masjid then? Because, because I'm a man, I'm jealous. But because of my jealousy, I don't prevent my wife from coming to the masjid. Go and deal with your jealousy. Oh brother, sisters come to the masjid. It's a fitna. Deal with your head, my brother. You find fitna in sister, something is wrong with your head, not with the sister. Go and see a therapist. Lock up the sisters at home, oh, because we don't want to see them in case of fitna. What do you mean in case of fitna? Are you that sick in your mind? Their creations of Allah have been created to worship Allah too. Masajids are theirs as much as yours. You know what, brothers and sisters? I would rather my wife come to the masjid with my children regularly than me not coming to the masjid at all. Because my wife will teach my children from the day they are born until 7, 8, until 14, until they become independent and they will follow their mother to the letter. If my wife is masjid-centric, my children will also be masjid-centric. Of course I should bring my children to the masjid, but wife, mother is a very different ballgame. My brothers and sisters, when you think some brothers say, I can hit my wife, really? Give me an example of Rasulullah ever hitting any of his wives or his children or any female companions ever. Give me an example of when Rasulullah hit his wife. Please give me one example. You can't find one. If Rasulullah is the manifestation of the Quran, what makes you think you can hit your wife? Oh brother, I can hit my wife with a siwak. But his siwak is as big as a tree trunk. Forget the siwak. You, can't, you're not even, you should not even touch your wife with anger and malice. What kind of a human being are you? 
I said to my wife, the day I become angry enough to hit you, that's the day marriage is over. That's the day marriage is over because I have lost respect completely so much that I can hit you. Why would I hit my partner? Why would I hit somebody I love? Why would I even think of hitting somebody who is the children of my, who is the mother of my children? Why would I hit somebody who is an equal servant of Allah? If I have lost respect of that person, that person should not be my partner anymore. I received so many phone calls from sisters saying my husband has hit me. You know what I say to the sisters? Call the police. What? Stop for Allah, brother. Why should I? Call the police. These brothers need to be locked up in a cell for 12 hours and then they will wake up. They will never hit you again. Women are to be respected and honored and dignified. Not for you to abuse and objectify and sully them any time that you wish. You're not Andrew Tate. We are Muslims. And our role model is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We don't say words that denigrate a woman. We don't insult a woman. We don't treat them in any other way except the way Allah wanted you and I to treat them. My brothers and sisters, what else can I say? True believers, man and woman, are protectors of one another. Protection requires you giving protection to your sisters and your brothers. Protection of their honor. Protection of their rights. Protection of their dignity. Protection from harm in every way possible. Even with your words, with your action and with your thoughts. If you can't provide them that protection, you have not understood the concept of Islam at all. May Allah forgive us for our bad thoughts, especially that thought that we have against our sisters. May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. And may Allah make us the best of examples, especially the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa May Allah bless his ummah so that we can follow the beloved Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam properly. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. To be a man, you don't have to be cigar chomping, Ferrari driving, extensive luxury house living misogynist. You don't have to be anything like that. That is an awful example of what it means to be a man. What it means to be a man is to be a true devout servant of Allah. That's what it means to be a man. It means to be a man to be honorable and dignified with everybody. What it means to be a man is to provide protection and support to those who need it most. What it means to be a man is to be honorable yourself. What it means to be a man is not to exploit your anger and be abusive to other people. My brothers and sisters, if you claim to be Muslim, a true Muslim man would not look at a woman in a lustful manner. And if his eyes inadvertently stray, he would look down in shame and regret and ask Allah to forgive him. A true Muslim man would not sexualize woman with his gaze. A true Muslim man would never speak about woman using vulgar and obscene language behind her or in front of her. A true Muslim man would not speak about a woman with vulgarity and obscenity even between male friends. Never do. A true Muslim man would never abuse a woman in any way, shape or form. Verbally, physically, emotionally, sexually, economically, spiritually. A true Muslim man would never abuse a woman. A true Muslim man would accept woman as his equal, Allah's creation, Allah's servant, and respect them and honor them. A true Muslim man would remember Allah has made man and woman only to serve Allah alone. A true Muslim man would remember Allah made man and woman to only serve him alone. A true Muslim man would always treat woman with fairness, justice, compassion and grace. A true Muslim man would always treat woman with fairness, justice, compassion and grace. A true Muslim man would always be conscious of Allah in everything he does. A true Muslim man would look at a woman and see in her a servant of Allah. 
a person who is from the mother's generation or from those Allah has created like our mothers, like our daughters, like our sisters. A man came to beloved Prophet of Allah, وسلم, a young man, and he said, Ya Rasulullah, I feel like having an illicit relationship, sex outside marriage with this woman. Would you give me permission? Prophet was so open that companions could come and ask him like this. Prophet looked at the man and he said, I hear you very well. I hear what you're saying. Tell me, if you did this, would you not be doing this? If somebody did this to your mother, would you like it? No. If somebody did this to your sister, would you like it? No. Would you like it if somebody did that to your daughter? No. Would you like it if somebody did this to your niece? He said, no. Rasulullah then said, if you go and have sexual relationship with somebody who you're not married to, you are doing it to somebody's daughter, somebody's mother, somebody's niece, somebody's sister. Why do you think they will like it? The man said, Ya Rasulullah, I will not do it. Rasulullah made dua for the man. We, us men, all of you listening, us men, we've got to control our desires and our eyes. We've got to control our desires and our eyes. Our fitna is our own eyes and our own desires, not the sisters. Control them first. Learn how to control them. Get married. Honor your wife. Look after your wife. Treat her like a servant of Allah. And when you have a daughter, thank Allah. Allah has given you a daughter. But Rasulullah said, a man who has three daughters and brings her up, well, will you go to Jannah? A man said, yeah, Rasulullah, I've only got two. You too. You will go to Jannah too. A man said, yeah, I've got only one man, only one daughter. You too. In other words, if you have a daughter and if you bring them up and you look after them well, Rasulullah said, Allah has guaranteed you Jannah. This is not the same for man, by the way. Allah Rasulullah did not say, if you have a son and if you look after them well, you'll go to Jannah. In the case of woman, Rasulullah said this because it is extraordinary relationship. Our duty to look after all our sisters. It is our honor to look after our sisters. It is Allah given trust to look after our sisters. Do not ever mis dis uh, break the trust Allah has given you. I say this because I am a father of a daughter. And I tell you, if somebody did wrong to my daughter, Wallahi, I don't know what I will do. May Allah forgive us. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, Ya Akramur Akramin, have mercy on us, us Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Allah, forgive us our sins, Ya Allah. Forgive us our sins, Ya Allah. Forgive us our sins, Ya Allah. Help us to treat our brothers and sisters equally and fairly, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, help us to protect our brothers and sisters. Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, make us a protector unto one another, Ya Allah. Make us a partner for your cause and your deen, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, Ya Akramur Akramin. Remove disrespect from our society, Ya Allah. Remove misogyny from amongst ourselves, Ya Allah. Remove all sorts of oppression and abuse, Ya Rab. Remove all sorts of oppression and, uh, and, uh, and abuse, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Akramur Akramin. Protect our sisters, Ya Allah. Protect our mothers, Ya Allah. Protect our wives, Ya Allah. Protect our daughters, Ya Allah. Protect all the female of our society, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, give us all the abilities to treat them with dignity and honor, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, Ya Akramul Akramin, enable us to follow your beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu in everything, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, enable us to to follow your words, Ya Arhamur Rahimin. Ya Akramul Akramin, unite our hearts, Ya Allah. Unite our hearts, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, free Al-Aqsa from occupation, Ya Rab. Free Al-Aqsa from occupation, Ya Allah. Free Kashmir from occupation, Ya Allah. Free Yemen from the war, Ya Allah. Free, uh, free Afghanistan from the troubles, Ya Allah. Free Pakistan from the troubles, Ya Allah. Free every part of the world that is in trouble, Ya Allah. We make dua for our brothers and sisters in China. We make dua for our brothers and sisters in Uyghur, Ya Rab. We ask you to free all parts of the world that is in trouble, Ya Allah. Restore on this earth peace and stability, Ya Allah. Remove from this uh, earth tyrants and despots, Ya Allah. Ya Arhamur Rahimin, restore on this earth, peace and, peace and stability, Ya Allah. Rabbana, taqabbal minna inna kanta samul alim. Wa tub alayna ya maulana inna kanta tawabur rahim. Inna Allah ya'muru biladdi wal ihsan. Wa ita'i dhil qurba. Wa yanha'an al fahshai wal munkar al baghi. Ya'idukum la'allakum tadhakarun. Fadhkurun ya dhkurukum. Wa ashkuruli wa la takfurun. Wallahu ya'lamu ma nasna'un. Aqimi salah. While you're making the line straight, I've got a few announcements to make. Uh, make dua for... Those who are not well, I've received a number of messages by name. And uh, if I have not included um, your name, please forgive me. But make dua for all of those who are not well. We say, Ya Arhamur Rahim, and give them shifa from your shifa, Ya Allah. 
and those who have passed away, we make dua for those who have passed away that Allah have mercy 